if you're anything like me, you could care less about the Kardashians. Like, I literally have no clue what they even do. Anyway, I saw this clip of a podcast with Kendall Jenner, and even though I would normally not touch it, I decided to watch more of the interview, and what I found is actually very emblematic to what a lot of people believe about finding happiness, peace, and purpose. And maybe, just maybe, you're believing some of the lies as well. So, let's dive in. This video is made possible by the Daily Disciple Club on Patreon. To support my mission of equipping people to follow Jesus daily, join Patreon today. You can fall victim to so many things that don't serve you and that don't make you happy. If your happiness depends on the actions of others, you know, you're at mercy of things that you can't control. Mm -hmm. And that's never where I want to be. So I, I always want to live in like, me and my therapist talk about like my higher goddess, my higher self. Like I always want to live there. You know, when I'm there, you can't take that away from me. Yeah. That That's mine. And no matter what, you can disagree with me. You can agree with me. That's not going, my, my, I'm not changing. I'm not shifting. I'm here. I'm in my higher goddess. Yeah. So. so this is kind of shocking to say, but Kendall gets something right here. Her happiness is shouldn't be determined by other people and their approval of her. Great. That's a great mentality. Don't let your joy and your happiness be, you know, contingent on how other people feel about you or what they say about you. That's great. But what I find often happens in our culture is that we identify a problem correctly. We say, this is not good. Let's stop stop doing this, but then we go from one ditch to the other. So yeah, we shouldn't find our happiness or joy in other people and their perspective and what they say about us. But then what Kendall does is she goes internal. She says, okay, I need to reach this higher goddess and appeal to this. And this is where I find my happiness. You see, many people cling on to this idea of self-actualization to become the ideal person, the person that they were meant to be. And who is the ideal person? Well, this is defined by myself. This is what I would call the gospel of me. I call it the gospel of me because essentially in this worldview, I have become savior to myself. I am the good news that although the world is destructive and heartbreaking, I can look within at the power, comfort, peace, and happiness that I store within my being. I just need to tap into it. So why is this a mistake? Well, we'll get to that, but I hope you're beginning to think through it for yourself, but let's watch more. I was wondering, how has your purpose changed? You had this very confident view of, I, I want to be a model, you know, <laughs> you've, you've superseded, exceeded, and com continue to flourish in that world. And I, and I always wish that you do. You know, my purpose has evolved from obviously within business, doing what I want to do and making sure I'm happy and finding the thing that I love and all those things. But I've kind of, like I said, really tuned into me. And I think my purpose, at least at this very moment, and what I've kind of evolved into is is my higher goddess. Like I am determined to tune into her at all times. I was given this life for some reason, for whatever reason I was placed here. And I do feel a purpose to share and connect and put a smile on people's faces or make someone feel a positive feeling. And so I think that within me wanting to achieve me tuning into my higher goddess, I think that also entails me being a great version of myself for other people to then experience. So once again, Kendall is talking about tapping into her higher goddess, her purpose to really just pour into her and becoming the most ideal, actualized person she can be. So then she can also help other people. That sounds great, doesn't it? Well, there's a big problem. It's like we're trusting in a shipwreck boat to carry us to shore. Meanwhile, it has major holes in it. It will not take us to safety. But meanwhile, we're saying all sorts of good things to it. You're a strong boat. You're a good boat. You're a safe boat. You're a floating boat. But meanwhile, it's sinking. That's what we do to ourselves when we simply say, I am enough in myself. I am a strong person. I am a good person. I am a happy person. But in the midst of all these affirmations, if we look deep within the core of our being, we see all these broken pieces and cracks and holes. This is the result of sin, sin that we've committed and sin that have others have committed against us. But without Christ, we continue to suppress this truth about our own brokenness and instead see ourselves as the these divine beings capable of anything we desire. But here's the truth. You don't actually have everything within yourself that you need. The Bible says that we are a slave to sin, that we're a slave to these sinful desires, that we can't seem to get ourselves 
out of. And that's why we need Jesus, because we have these broken pieces within us that are tending towards sin and that cause havoc in our lives. And actually, because of our sin and rebellion against God, if God is good, he must punish sin. So we stand guilty before God, and we can't do anything in and of ourselves to patch these pieces. We may try by affirming ourselves or, you know, pouring into self-love and saying, you're such a good guy, you're such a good guy, you're such a good guy, but it won't change the fact that we are in need of a savior. Kendall's talked a lot about finding peace and happiness within herself. And although I'm sure she's been through some challenging things in her life, she is still a millionaire. So it's pretty easy to have that kind of surface level peace and happiness when all your basic needs are met. But then when you enter the real world, you encounter the anxiety and depression that is so prevalent with people that are crying out for hope of some kind, that they realize they can't actually muster this peace, hope, happiness within themselves. They need something else. So we're encountering these two problems and they're deeply connected. The first thing is that we're slaves to sin, that we follow our desires and, and we can't help ourselves but to fall into what is wrong. And then we have this idea of trying to find peace, joy, happiness, delight, joy. Like we, we know we were made to experience these things and, and yet we can't find them. We definitely can't find them within ourselves as much as we might convince ourselves we can just because we're in a kind of a good circumstance in life. When those things fade, we begin to experience once again the emptiness of life. But here's the thing, when Jesus came to this earth, he came to free us from the power of sin, that we would be alive to Christ and be made into new creations where our desires wouldn't be towards what is wrong and what is self-centered, but rather to what are the things of God. The scripture says that our joy is made complete in Christ and that through him we have a peace that surpasses all understanding. It is not temporal or circumstantial, it is eternal. Tapping into your higher goddess for strength, joy, peace is like trusting a freezer meal to give you a restaurant experience. Or it's like filling your gas tank with water, expecting it to bring you to your desired destination. It can't deliver, but Christ always delivers. Okay, here we go, John 10, 10. The thief comes to only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Please don't try to insert your own definition of abundantly in the Bible here, because we're still gonna experience trials and tribulations, but through Christ, we have an eternal hope that lasts. And a present reality where we can live in the love of Christ. And that's where healing comes, when God begins to mend and heal those oral wounds that have lingered on for such a long time, and where growth actually happens, where we grow more and more into the person that we were designed to be. And stepping into our true purpose, which isn't delighting in myself or affirming myself or glorifying myself, but rather delighting in God and bringing glory to Him. Until next time.